Hello, friends. Maestro here, and welcome back to another episode of my favorite podcast. Right off the bat, do not forget Cyber Monday sales are coming your way Monday, November 28th. So mark your little calendars. And remember, the folks on the email list will always get the biggest discounts. Why? Because I can. Because I can. So if you're not on the email list yet, head on over to themovementmaestro.com forward slash email list to join. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we can talk about the episode. But maybe first, actually, two more things. One, we're almost at a million downloads. I don't know when you're going to listen to this. If you listen to this, you know, the day that it drops, then maybe we might, we probably won't be there just yet. But last I checked, we were at 996,000 and some hundred amount of downloads, which is amazing to me. We're going to hit a million downloads this year. It's only taken me four and a half short years. It was like, you know, basically overnight. Uh, but I'm really stoked about that. So thank you for that. And I'm excited for, you know, another million, but I'm just excited for every episode that we get to do and moving this into the you know the YouTube space and just switching things up and just, I'm incredibly grateful, incredibly stoked. And I just want to give you a little update on that. It'll be happening in the next few episodes. Amazing. I also realized that I hadn't done a knee update in quite some time, which maybe is a good thing because that means that it's kind of less on my mind. But uh, if you're new to the podcast, I hurt my knee about five and a half weeks ago from the time. Actually, it'll be about six weeks exactly from the date that this episode gets released. Uh, hurt my knee playing volleyball. I've been rehabbing it. Pretty sure AC No. Whew. Whoa, it's not ACL. Pretty sure it's uh, MCL and meniscus. The MCL stuff seems to pretty be pretty much be largely resolved. Um, a little bit of twinginess every now and again, um, but what I'm dealing with now is more so meniscal. Um, it's like a deeper kind of ache. There's no instability or anything like that. Um, there's no like severe swelling or anything like that. And if you folks have been following me on Instagram, you know that I have literally been doing all of the things, both, you know, healing from the inside and out, changing the diet, adding some supplements in, all of the, you know, um, red light things, doing all of my PT stuff from the past. And now I'm largely in more of like the strengthening phase. I haven't done and progressed into more of the dynamic stuff. That's like the last thing, right? Rate of loading would be the last variable that we look to add in and manipulate. Uh, I'm in just the strengthening phase. And this is going to be you know, pretty meta for this episode because I do believe it's meniscal involvement. One of the issues you have there is that you can't really load it because then it gets kind of painful. As for whether or not it's going to heal, that's not really my concern. My concern is that my body uh, accommodates to it and giving in the time to accommodate to it. It is harder to accommodate to something that's traumatic like this was, right? When you have degeneration that occurs over time, easier to adjust to and accommodate to. Um, but with this, it was more of a, an isolated instance, isolated instance, isolated incident, whatever you want to say. Um, and so that makes it a little bit more of a danger signal for your brain because it just you know, came on suddenly. So trying to give my body time to accommodate two things and not compensate. And dude, your body is so smart. Like my quad is like, no, we ain't doing anything. We are chilling out. And your body does that literally to protect you because it's like, hey, if I give you full functionality, you're going to go and jack yourself up even more. So my quad is like every day trying to take a vacation. So to make this meta with the episode, I actually reached out to Smart Tools. They were, you know, somewhat of a competitor with Rock Tape kind of in the past, um, but I don't work for Rock Tape anymore. And I reached out to them for their BFR cuff. So for those of you that don't know, BFR is blood flow restriction, and it is a way to strength train without having to impose a ton of load through that tissue and through those joints. So I reached out to them and pitched. It was a very simple pitch. Um, reached out to them in the DMs and they're going to send me two cuffs. So they send one for each leg. Um, I really only need the one, um, but they're going to send out a set of cuffs. I'm going to use them. I will, like I always do, bring the owner on and you know humanize the brand. We're going to talk about branding. Humanize the brand and allow you to hear directly from him. And I'll keep you updated with all of that. I'll be sharing it in my stories. Um, but this is one of the benefits of building a, a brand. And in this case, we're going to talk about building a personal brand. So that's the knee update. And this is a great segue into how to build an online personal brand. So right off the bat, I think it's, that's my favorite saying, right? Right off the bat, I think we should be looking and thinking about what is a brand? What does that even mean? I'm all about Googling things and trying to find words because one of the things I think that happens is we start using words kind of colloquially 
and maybe it's a little bit different from what it's def- you know actually defined as. And so trying to put words to things and kind of what we've come to know these things as versus what maybe it actually is defined as. So I went to old Google and brand, and I Googled what is a brand, and the Google result was the term brand refers to a business and marketing concept, look at that concept, that helps people identify a particular company, product, or individual. Brands are intangible, which means you can't actually touch or see them. As such, they help shape people's perceptions of companies, their products, or individuals. And I really liked here that it spoke to that kind of intangible nature of it. Because when we say it, I think we all kind of, you know, instinctively, inherently understand that. But when you look at the definition, you're like, yeah, okay. And then when I'm trying to talk about it and help someone build an online personal brand, I think it does become helpful to try and come up with some words, though, to the people can kind of sink their teeth into and be like, okay, yeah, I understand this. So before I get to my definition of what a brand is, I want to talk about some of the words that we use as it is that I think that, you know, kind of, we don't have necessarily solid definitions for. So number one is branding. Well, you know, I always say always be branding and people tag me in stories and I love it. And, you know, they have their colors and things like that. And they're like, always be branding. Yes. Here's the thing though. To me, branding actually means how you make people feel. You are always branding, whether or not you want to be branding or not, or whether or not you realize it. I, I think that when people are, are tagging me, what they, if I was going like to really take, take that apart and dissect it, it'd be you know, consciously or strategically branding. And more specifically, they're sharing their brand identity because they're usually talking about, look at my logo, look at the colors, right? So brand identity is what's the, the name for logos, fonts, colors, the things that people associate with your brand um, and that you use to identify your brand and separate it from or distinguish it from other brands. That's brand identity. So when people tag me in things, they're actually speaking to, about their brand identity. And the, the phrase then would be like, always strategically be talking about or always strategically be sharing your brand identity. That's what they mean in that. But that doesn't, that's not very catchy. But if we're going to take this apart and then really look to to find some stuff, it is what it is, All right? Branding, how you make people feel, brand identity, the logos, the fonts, the colors, the things that, you know, people get really hung up on, um, but that's just one part of, of branding. It's one part of your brand. To me, your brand is your reputation. You have a brand whether or not you want to have one or not. People may not necessarily use that word for you because they haven't, like, um, turned it into a business or kind of like productized it, but... You're, you are the brand. Your reputation is your brand. So when people say, I want to build an online personal brand, understand that you already have a personal brand. We're looking to move it into the online space and we're looking to get strategic and intentional with it. So in terms of, or in line with getting intentional, I think this is, speaks to asking better questions. As always, if you want better answers, ask better questions. And so when people are saying that they want to build an online personal brand, I'm, I'm not thinking like, what are they actually saying? To me, what I think they mean is they want to build a profitable, oh, I, I little stumble there. They want to build a profitable business that is based on being themselves. That's it. To me, because it's usually like younger people too. They're like, I want to build a personal brand. I'm like, all right. Because most times the people that I work with, they actually want, they say they want to have a business and build an online business. Very few people come directly to me saying that they want to build a brand, but it's my expertise because that's what they end up doing is they build personal brands and their brand is their business, but it is them, right? There'd be a bunch of equal signs here. So if I was going to put a definition on brand, my definition would be a holding company for the values, beliefs, attitudes, and actions of an individual, right? So this is, again, my definition for, I would say, an online personal brand. And this is when we're taking it into the business sector of things. I'm not just saying, hey, it's a reputation, because it is. But if we're looking to kind of tie into those folks that are like, I want to build an online personal brand, and those folks that are saying that they actually want to have a profitable business that's based on being themselves, well, then to me, the definition of an online personal brand is a holding company for the values, beliefs, attitudes, and actions of an individual. Now, for those of you that are like, what the hell is a holding company? Well, Google that because I like when I was actually walking when I came up with this definition, I was like, that feels good. It fits because, again, it's like this intangible thing with brand with a brand. 
And so I went and Googled it to give you some specific words here. And as per Googs, a holding company is a parent business entity, usually a corporation or LLC that doesn't manufacture anything, doesn't sell any products or services, and doesn't conduct any other business operations. A holding company exists purely to hold ownership of the assets of their subsidiaries. So lots of words to say that this company is like a shell for all of the things on the companies underneath and within it, all the things that get made and, and such. And that's what an online brand becomes. You are the one that's making the content, making the things, providing the services. And then your brand would be this holding company, right? It'd be that parent business. It'd be the thing that people identify, the, people, the thing that people know. So in my case, the Movement Maestro LLC, right? It's a holding company and for me, for all of my beliefs, my attitudes, my actions, my values. Okay, so if I had to define it, that's how I would define it. And now we can move into how to actually build that online personal brand and expectation management. And lastly, the benefits of doing this and you know why you'd even want to do this in the first place. Okay, so seven steps that I've laid out. I'm not going to lie, folks. Doing the podcast this way, it is, is harder. And I know I've, I've been saying this for the past, I don't know, two, three episodes, because it's the truth. Being transparent here, it is harder. It takes me two hours, more than two hours to do an episode now. Um, and it will get faster, but part of it is that I, you know, write an outline here for this. Um, so if you are watching this on video, you see me looking at the screen because I'm looking at the outline for things. There's no shame in that. I got things, it's no specific ideas that I want to convey. Uh, and then, you know, make sure the video and things like that. So we're, we're moving along. I tried something else today and went back to doing it the original way. I was like, I don't really love the, the video, video quality as much. But anyway, I digress. As it relates to building an online personal brand, I have broken it down into seven steps. If you know me, you already know, I think a bunch of the ones that are coming, but let's jump on in. Number one, establish your why. Why do you want to do this? And the first thing I'm going to say in my, like, what's coming out of my mouth is like, are you some 21 year old person? I don't want to say kids. I'm 21 person. That's like seeing people online. You're like, I want a personal brand. I want to be able to live me and get paid, live as me, live my life and get paid for it. Okay, cool. Good luck. I don't think that that why is necessarily going to carry you through because this is going to take a long time. And typically, if we don't have some sort of deeper why, we stop because we don't get that thing very quickly. We don't make that money really quickly. We don't get that validation, external validation really quickly. And then we stop. So number one, establish your why. Why do you want to do this? For me, it kind of, it happened by accident. I didn't say, I didn't set out to build a personal brand. I set out on, on Instagram simply to share my ideas, help people, connect with some people. And from there, I was like, oh, look, I've built this thing because it's your reputation, right? It can absolutely happen without you trying because you're going to build a reputation no matter what. The second thing, right? We're looking to get so if we're looking to get strategic specific with this, then and intentional with this, the number two would be identify your values. One, what are the things that you value? Yes, but two, what are your values? That was a little confusing there because I said one and two. So maybe A, what are the things you value? B, what are your values? And uh, Court, if you could link the episode with Laura Jean, that would be amazing. Uh, we talked all about, about values, right? Values are verbs, and it's going to dictate and influence how you show up. Number three, pick a communication medium that you like, maybe that you're most proficient with, that you're most comfortable with. And from there, you can pick an online platform. Typically, it's going to be a social media platform because we're talking about online personal brands. So in this case, picking the communication media, maybe you are into writing. Okay. Then we're looking at something like Substack maybe, or you have a blog and we're really doubling down on SEO. Uh, if you're more so into video, then maybe you go right directly to YouTube and you hit up my guy, Dr. Joe, Joe O. He's Doc Joe O on Instagram. Joe, he's editing this uh, YouTube video as well. So we'll plug the things, add yourself to the, to the notes. Uh, maybe you really like to do more of visual things, not just purely video. And so maybe you're, you know, playing your hand with, with Instagram and seeing how that goes, figure out how you like to communicate from there, pick a platform and double down. I've done episodes in this in the past and I really think your best bet is to pick one thing own it and from there look to diversify, right? We're 400 plus episodes in and now we're going to YouTube with this. I'm 4,000 plus 
ep- uh, not episodes, 4,000 plus posts in on Instagram. And now I'm going into YouTube and, you know, dabbling in TikTok. Good Lord. I really am struggling with that one. Um, so pick one thing and then you can look to double down. I'm not going to lie. When I first started, I tried doing all of them. I, you know, just like, okay, I have a blog that I'm going to write. I have some YouTube videos I'm going to upload. But at the end of the day, I really focused on Instagram and that is the platform that took off. And it's not surprising because I actually stuck with it. Number four, show up 110% as yourself. This is all going to be based on authenticity. It's the only way to have some to have longevity and sustainability here. To me, authenticity is simply showing up in exact alignment with your values and beliefs. That is someone who is authentic. Maybe that makes them an asshole, but well, they can still be authentic. Um, so I'm not saying it's an excuse or you know for being an asshole, but Authenticity comes from showing up in exact agreement, alignment, accordance with your values and your beliefs, which is why I said point number two was identify those values. Number five, share your life, share your gift or gifts and teach everything you know. I, t- I pull in that last part of teach everything you know, because that is the audience that I work with. Most of us are service-based providers. And in this case, we're providing something outside of entertainment. You probably will not get paid just for being you unless there is a high interest factor. Like your life is really interesting. And if you think about the Kardashians, it's always the person that comes to mind. Like they have a high interest factor. I have nothing against the Kardashians. All right? Part of their interest factor now is that they have a lot of money and it's just like, it's this escapism. And you're like, what is this nonsense? Who thinks like this? But for most of us, we don't have that. And we have different types of interest factors. And it's typically helpful to lean on. And I'm on a, I almost want to say it's imperative to have some sort of expertise. Right, so I, I know I'm thinking about um, Ali Spagnola. I think that's how she pronounces her last name. She's a dating a friend of mine. And she, I just I binge her content on YouTube because she's just She's brilliant and she's so good at what she do, she, what she does, what she do. Oh my goodness. She's so good at what she does. So from the musician musical perspective, like this chick is just next level. She hears something, she can play it. You know, I know like Charlie Puth is a big name, but like to me, Ali, I'm like, holy shit. Like she's doing it in real time. And then she just has this really dynamic personality. So there's an interest factor because she's doing things that are just like, what? this is like outside of my understanding. There's an expertise factor because she is just absolutely brilliant when it comes to music and then just how she puts it together, how she tells the story and just, you know, her mannerisms, they're very interesting and very captivating, right? So those things are going to go into, you know, building that personal brand in the online space. And again, we talked, you know, point number three, picking the medium that works best for you. Maybe you're a writer. And so that's how you, you know, you will demonstrate your expertise and you, you write very well. And there's an interesting factor, an interest factor there. What I'm trying to get at here is that just being you And to be like, I'm just going to be me and like do nothing. That's probably not going to, that will build an online personal brand, but that may not build an online business. So something to consider. Um, Last part with this is that if you are really in the entertainment sector, that's not my forte where some people are like, I'm just going to be me. I'm funny. Okay. That's, that's not what my expertise is. So I can't really go down that rabbit hole. I can kind of dissect things and look at things and be like, okay, well, there's this, that, and that. Um, But what I've seen and the people, one, the people who I work with and two, what I've seen across the board is just this expertise factor. One, it allows you to solve problems, which we're going to get to in terms of the benefit of this and why, why we do this, Um, but it allows you to solve problems. And that's where we get that exchange from people, right? You solve a problem, you give something to someone and they give you something in return. Yes, you may give them entertainment, but like I said, that is not my expertise. And I found that um, it is a dynamic duo, if you will, when it's infotainment or edutainment, right? Where you're educating someone, but it's also entertaining or you're providing information and it's also entertaining. All All right. So back to the list. Point number six or step number six, interact with your audience. This isn't just broadcasting, you know, across the board. I think about people, especially when they first start, it's, it's easier because you have a smaller audience. Love on your people. Get to know your people. The more you get to know your people, the more trust that you build, 
which is a huge part of having a brand. And two, you get to hear what people actually care about. What do they want? So from a business perspective, because typically when people are saying they want an online personal brand, they want the business side of it, right? They want to be able to monetize this. And businesses are built on solutions to problems. So you got to talk and speak with your audience, engage with your audience, interact with your audience so you can hear what those problems are and you can come up with solutions. And then point number seven, which is maybe the most important do all of these steps for a long ass time. And I'm talking about thinking in terms of years, not months. I know I saw that 18 month mark, but yeah, and realistically, yeah, you can start to, you'll establish, start to establish your brand from the very beginning, but to really solidify this thing and really get traction with this thing and really have an established brand, we're looking at years. You want a number? Cool. Five years. And the reason I throw that number out there is because you have to be willing to do this for that long. If you're like, oh, I'm only willing to try this for two months or a year, you're going to stop. Flip side, if you're like, I will do this for as long as it takes, and I'm thinking in terms of years, you'll succeed because years are, is a long time. It's a long time and a lot that you can accomplish in that time. Right? So we got seven steps on how to build an online personal brand. Very important here. I want to, as always, manage expectations. Three parts here. Number one, not everyone succeeds. It would be great if everyone got everything that they wanted and, you know, they were the happiest ever. I want that for people, but the reality is not everyone succeeds. And when I say succeeds, I'm talking about in the very general sense here, this is why it's also important to establish your why, because that allows, I think, for a greater likelihood of success. If you're like, well, to me, success means X. And I did an episode, I don't know, two or three episodes ago. If you could link that in the show notes. Thank you. Uh, you know, I did an episode about this. And so success is subjective and it's dependent on what you think it is. Right. And in that case, I think that more people will, will succeed. But if we have this um, you know, loose understanding of success as getting famous or becoming rich, well, then definitely not everyone succeeds. Second part, and I'm thinking about Ali again, passion is a prerequisite. Get obsessed with this thing. Let, go all in. Let it consume you. I truly believe that having a passion for the thing that you're doing is a prerequisite. Why? Because it's what's going to carry you through. Because I said, it's going to take a long time to see the financial outcome of this thing, to see the fruits of your labor. And if you're not just obsessed with it, you're going to stop. Number three, again, thinking about Allie, sounds a little stalkerish, but it is what it is. Expertise will set you apart. The people I know who are doing the best, they are the best at what they do and they're, they're in it. And yes, some people have a natural gift for certain things. They're able to do things easier, faster. They pick things up faster, whatever it may be. But that expertise is what will set you apart from your competition. And one of the things I think is really cool about this is that gaining an expertise, right? That's a skill. It's learned. So you can work harder at that. Yes, again, some people may not have to work as hard to get where you're at, whatever, they have some natural talents, but this is still something that can be learned, acquired, worked on. All right, All right. last part, because I am looking at the time and we're going a little longer than I want, but it happens. All right, so last part is the benefit of building an online personal brand. Why would you want to do this in the first place? It's my guess if you're listening to this episode, one, either you just love me, so thank you, and you're just supporting, or two, you already had this in mind, and you're like, I want to do this to monetize this at some point. And this is not necessarily your why, but it is an offshoot of things. When we have money as like um, a, like a side effect of things, that's amazing. If that's our only goal, that becomes tough. But when it's like, I want to do this thing, and as a byproduct, they make money, boom, amazing. So the benefit of having an online personal brand, and we're going to speak about it, it's the money. But understand that monetizing, like I said earlier, is about solving problems, right? Businesses are built on solutions to problems. They're not built on just being cool, right? And if you were like, oh, but it is, well, then that being cool is providing an entertainment value or providing something to that person, that consumer, right? It, at the end of the day, it is about solving a problem. So let's break this into two parts here, solving problems for other businesses and then solving problems for your audience. So we'll go B to B and then we'll go B to C and then we will wrap it up. So when we're talking about B to B, solving problems for other businesses, um, other companies, other brands, in this case, you have what they want. You have, if you have a personal brand, 
right? That implies that you have an audience. I shouldn't say that implies, but that is the goal of having this online personal brand. You use that to attract an audience and build trust with that audience. And then from there, that means that you have something that these businesses want. You have eyes and ears of potential and trust of potential customers. When you speak, your people listen. They use you as a shortcut for things. I am doing this right now, like I said earlier, with uh, smart tools and their BFR cuffs. I have an audience, you are proud of my audience, and I am very, very protective over my audience, incredibly protective of my audience. And I won't just put anyone in front of my audience. And that's the discussion that I had with these people. And they can see, obviously, with you know, just going looking at Instagram and looking at the engagement and things like that. And then in addition to that, I have this brand that has this reputation and I have trust with other people in the space. So, you know, I have people that work at that company that know me, that know my brand and can also vouch for me. So on the one from the first part, going B2B, you have what other businesses, companies, brands want, which is the attention and the trust of your people. So you solve a problem for them, kind of shortcut the trust cycle. And in that case, you can monetize the fact that you have this personal brand that has attracted this audience. Second part is, or you know, second, yeah, we'll say second part is going B to C, and that's going to be solving problems for your own audience. Obviously, you can monetize this just by solving the problem. You, what we're all doing, what many of you are doing, you listen to the audience. They say that you know they have some problem, and it relates to your expertise, and from there you can create something. One thing that I want to talk about is a little bit different, and actually, Hormozy, Alex Hormozy was talking about it on talking about it on his podcast, and I was like, I actually like this. And the example he gave was in terms of what you can charge, and you know, the value of having a personal brand, and what that means for changing, or influencing, impacting how much you can charge for a certain thing. So the example he used was Kylie um, and Kylie Cosmetic, and he was talking about like a general lipstick versus a lipstick with the Kylie Cosmetic logo on it. Now, ideally, they'd be, these would be two separate products, but if you were to take the same product and you just put her lipstick on it, her lipstick, when I'm saying her logo on it, now it's identified with her brand or associated with her brand, suddenly you can charge more. And I'm not saying this like in a gross way. I want to dissect this a little bit. I, I think I've said dissect a million times, so maybe make it a drinking game and go listen to the episode again. But the reason that having this brand allows for different price points is because the brand is a guarantee, right? The brand has an established, it's the same thing as an established reputation that signifies or indicates that you can deliver or this thing will deliver what people want and people will pay for guarantees. So yes, Kylie has, you know, the guarantee there is that, you know, it's a status symbol, you'll be part of this community, whatever. Maybe it's the quality of the product. I don't know. That's not my world. But the one that I thought of immediately was DeWalt. So I like to build things. And to me, whenever I see that yellow, that's their brand identity, right? The colors. I know that if I buy from that brand, it's going to be good quality and it's not going to break. Whether it's a drill or a sand or an angle grinder or whatever it is, I know that I'm going to get that guarantee of that quality, which means I am more willing to pay more, pay a different price point because of that. And so that is the actual value that comes with having an established personal brand. Your brand becomes associated with a certain guarantee. But now you also see why the, there is that need for expertise and being able to get that result. Because you can have it the other way and have your brand just be associated with trash, right? And just be like, don't go to that brand. That brand is bad. If you shop with them, it's probably going to break. Okay. All right, I'm still looking at the time. We, let's wrap this thing up. Understand that when it comes to building an online brand, you are the brand, right? Excuse me, when it comes to building an online personal brand, you are the brand. How you make people feel is branding. The logos, the fonts, the colors, things like that, that is simply brand identity. So right, these are different things. When people say that they want to build, or maybe when you say that you want to build a, a an online personal brand, typically what they mean is they want to build a profitable business that is based on them being themselves, which is cool, but understand it's probably going to require some sort of expertise 
Why? Because businesses are built on solutions to problems. And above all else, it's going to take time. Gauge your progress in terms of years and you will never be disappointed. Okay, officially going to wrap it up here. No call to action at the end of this. I gave him one in the beginning. As always, incredibly grateful that you're joining me on this journey. We're going to keep switching it up with the, with the video and trying to add a beginning into it. I, it's got a lot of stuff that I'm working on, and I am incredibly grateful that all of you are here with me. Until next time, friends, Maestro out.